werewolf pack on the south side, weirdo convent of witches on the northern part of the city. But they were exhausting themselves now fighting against a pyro who was causing trouble on the east side, torching neighborhoods, just generally causing panic. The official word from the Detroit PD was that there was an arsonist on the loose, which I guess was technically correct, except this one didn't need gasoline and matches. The team had been fighting him for a week now. He had a crew of witches and a few lesser demons working with him. Nain and the crew had taken out the strongest of his demon buddies, but he still was wreaking havoc. I'd barely seen the rest of the team. They were usually passed out in their rooms when I arrived after work. Nain was even more tired than the rest. When he wasn't fighting, he was training me. He's tearing these neighborhoods apart. He's forcing people out of their homes. People are dying, Molly. We don't have the luxury of letting you extend this particular pity party for yourself. I'm not ready, I said. What if I lose control again? If you do, we'll work on it more. We'll keep working on it. But we need you to do this now. We can keep him busy, fighting out front. You do your thing from behind the scenes. Convince him to stop. Bend him at your will. Make him behave. We've tried everything. He paused, and I could feel frustration flowing from him like a tidal wave. It's impossible to fight someone when all they have to do is blast a fireball at you. I sighed. Yeah, okay. I could stop it. They deserved a break. I tried to ignore the dread settling in the pit of my stomach. Nain reached up, tucked a stray curl behind my ear, gently ran his fingertips through the strands. I stopped breathing. His deep blue eyes met mine. You're afraid again, he said softly. I've spent two weeks hurting you in dozens of ways. In every way, I've let myself hurt you and I haven't seen real fear in your eyes until now. His gaze burned into mine, and he leaned forward just slightly. I felt a tremor run through my body, felt my heart race as he closed in. His lips were a hair's breadth from touching mine when I felt someone nearby and pulled away. Within seconds, the roof door opened. Brennan walked out and glanced between me and Nain. I felt irritation, disappointment from him. My face was burning, my heart still racing. Brennan. Nain growled, backing away and standing up. Relief. I could breathe again. Veronica and George are fighting again. He's moving out. He says he's done. With her and the team. I did everything I could do to talk some sense into him, and so did Ada and Stone. He shook his head. They're ridiculous. I think you need to deal with it. Brennan said. Nay nodded and stalked through the door without another word. Brennan stood there, watching me. Training, huh? He said, raising an eyebrow and walking over to the short wall that surrounded the roof. Yeah. I walked over to where he was and leaned against the wall next to him. I'm going to be going with you guys to fight the pyro tonight. I said. He nudged me with his elbow. You ready for that? I shrugged. I don't have much choice at this point. I can't keep letting you guys get the shit kicked out of you when I could stop it. Superior much? I shrugged. It's the truth. He let out a short, bitter laugh. You've been spending too much time with Nain. Yes. We sat and watched the sunset over the city, waiting to find out where the pyro would pop up that night. The tiny bit of cool breeze was a welcome change from the sweltering heat earlier in the day. We sat side by side on the wall, feet dangling over the side of the building, mostly silent. Brennan was one of those people you could just relax with. We didn't need to talk, and I wasn't much for conversation anyway. Every second that passed brought me closer to having to use my powers again, to using them on someone's mind. I knew if I hurt the pyro, it would be something he deserved. That didn't make it any better. And the worst part of it was, that part of me, the dark part, the part Nain and I had been trying to put into a cage, was looking forward to it. <laughs>